Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be debugging this flight controller. Now this problem with this flight controller is it's not booting off a USB, but it's booting off of the five volt input because this takes a five volt input. As you can tell, I'm plugging in the USB and there's no life at all in this. And the reason this happened was I built this inside a quadcopter and I used a screwdriver to try to bind my receiver and I accidentally shorted something and something fried obviously. Now, next step to do if you do have this issue is test your 5 volt regulator. For example, if your flight controller takes battery voltage, then give it some battery voltage, see if it will boot. If it does, then that's a really good sign. If it doesn't, then this is what you have to do. So first steps first, and even though, even if it does, if, the, if it does and the USB doesn't or vice versa, it's the same exact step. First thing to do is to grab your multimeter and go into continuity mode, which is the little beeping sign. All right, so before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. They also provide a 24-hour ex express service if you are in a hurry and want your projects in your hands as soon as possible. You can also check their shared project page if you're looking for some fun DIY kits contributed by other users. And they also hold a lot of events and some PCB contents, which you could actually win cash prizes for. I do highly recommend you check out PCBWay. And to check out PCB way, check the links down below. First thing to do is to grab your multimeter and go into continuity mode, which is the little beeping sign. And as you can tell, when you touch it, it beeps. And what we want to do first is we want to check if there's a ground on the 3.3 volt regulator. And you might say, okay, why do you want to do that? Well, because the 3.3 volt regulator powers up the microcontroller unit and the gyro, and this is what's powering off the LEDs here. Now, if you have four or three LEDs, then they could represent other things, but your two main LEDs are powered from the microcontroller unit here. It is actually programmed through a couple of the pins in the firmware. So you have to see these boot up. So we're not seeing them boot up. And what we wanna do is find the 3.3 volt regulator pads here. Here we go, 3.3 volt and ground. So what I wanna do is I wanna to touch these two. Hopefully there is no short. Okay, so there's no short, so that's a really great sign. That is a huge possibility that your 3.3 volt regulator is not burned. So the next step is the most common IC to actually burn on a flight controller is the shot key diode. Now this diode is what allows the two five volts to come in and not touch each other. For example, from the five volt regulator and the five volt from USB, so you don't have any issues. And that one looks something like this. It looks like this one, looks like this one, looks like this one. So on this board, we have three of them. And how the hell are we gonna figure out which one? Well, it's actually very simple. So here we have just three. It usually comes with one leg up top and then two legs on the bottom. So one, two, three here. So the next step we wanna do is we wanna find which one is receiving five volts from the USB and five volts from the five volt pads. So we have to probe is the bottom legs. Don't probe the top leg, it's useless. So this actually takes both five volts and then lets one go through or both go through but they won't come back and crisscross with each other. So the five volt would come through here all the way to the 3.3 volt regulator. So let's set up our multimeter in continuity mode again. And for ease of access, because I can't access the five volt in pad, I set up this wire here. So it's like me touching the uh, pad right there. All right, so I'm just gonna touch that here. I'm gonna start probing the bottom legs. Nope, nope. We should hear a beep if it's, if it's one of them. Nope, okay, and then. All right, so that's good. So that's 50-50% chance or more like 100% chance this is going to be the correct one. And to know if it's the correct one, we need to go to the second leg and uh, actually probe the 5 volt from the USB. But most more likely, it's the one that you need. However, I've done the 5 volt USB here on this connector. If you saw me solder that wire earlier, so I could just make it easier for me because it's on the other side. So I'm just going to touch the pin for the 5 volt from the USB and touch the other leg. Perfect. So this is it. So this is this is the diode that's getting 5 volt from the regulator and 5 volt from the USB here. And it's allowing it to come out here to the 3.3 volt regulator to power up the microcontroller unit and the gyro. All right. So now what's the next step? Well, the next step we can do a couple things actually. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my multimeter into diode mode, which is that little sign right there. Let's actually zoom in a little bit. And it's this one right there, which is finding it hard to zoom. That little one right there. This means two modes. Forget the arrow. This one. The one that you see right there, that's diode mode. And what you want to do is you want to grab your probes and the color does matter here. And let's see if we can keep this in line here. You want to get your negative probe, the black one on the top leg here. And we're going to see this side. We're going to test one side. So we're getting a 2.34 uh, voltage drop, which is good. I don't know if it's, that's how it's supposed to be or not, but we're getting something. And if we go to the USB side, which is the side that's not working, 
and we touch it, we get nothing. So that obviously means there's a problem. So I guess the connection between them is just gone or burnt because of the short circuit that I have created. What you can also do if you run if you don't have diode mode, you can go into the ohms check and mostly like 99% of multimeters can check uh, the ohms here. So we can do the same thing. It doesn't matter which probe you have where now, but you know, it's really, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna check the five volt place. Here's a five volt. And we're getting three, 33, 34,000 K ohms. Okay, is that good? I don't know. Let's check the other leg. And we're getting nothing or infinite resistance. That means there's no connection right here. So that tells us that this is the issue right here. Now, if both of them have infinite resistance, then the whole diode is broke. And it could be the other way around where it powers up from the USB, but when you plug it in your quadcopter, it's not powering up. More than likely, it's this one. Now, there's something also to take note of here. Let's just say you just wanted it to work really quick and you don't care about beta flight. What can you do? So what you can do is you can remove this, and this was the five volt from the regulator, and then we can just bridge this one with this one. Don't bridge both of them, just this one with this one. And for another, if for some other reason you, you had to start programming it again, you could remove the bridge and bridge this one with this one, and then uh, be able to program it while powering up at the same time. So you can do that as well. And um, actually you can still connect the USB, to be honest, with just bridging these two, and you'll be totally fine. But if you connect the USB without battery, uh, then it won't boot, but if this, provides if you bridge these two and uh, left the USB not bridged, you can program it, but you have to also supply it five volts or battery power to the flight controller here. Now I'm gonna show you a neat trick how I actually figure this out, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what I did was I was actually too lazy to put it in my quadcopter. And I wanted to make sure that, because nothing is getting hot, so I immediately, and there was no short on 3.3 volt regulator. So I thought something's up with the USB here. So as you can tell, the left side of the USB is the five volt, and here we have the five volt in. And what I did was, I got my multimeter, and I set it into read amperage. Now, not all of them do that, but when I set this, what it does is it creates connection between these two. And uh, what that'll do is it'll, it'll create a connection here, and then I got the USB, plugged it in, and then, Obviously, I'm not gonna get anything. But then what I did was, I took one of the probes, put it on the five volt, like this. Now it's on the five volt from the USB. And I put it on the five volt in, because this one takes five volt from external regulator. And then I just touched it. As you can tell, that's working. And on the PC, it's actually working also. It just picked up. So that is pretty damn awesome. So that was just another way you can actually test it. If there's no power on your USB, you can do the same method here and that should power it up. So as you can tell now, we do have a bad diode and this is the ones that are usually burn out, you know, on most flight controls most of the time. However, if you had a short on the 3.3 volt regulator, that could be scary because it could be the 3.3 volt regulator. It also could be the microcontroller unit, rarely the gyro, but also it could be the gyro or it's just a resistor or a capacitor. I do have some flight controls when you plug it in and then you get very dim LED lights. And what that means, there's a short circuit on a 3.3 volt rail, Was it whether it's the microcontroller unit, whether it's the gyro, whether it's the 3.3 volt regulator, or anything that is connected with them, such as a resistor that's gone bad, or, or something of that nature. And I do have more flight controllers that are being contributed, which is really nice of you guys, that I'll be able to do more videos such as this to help people debug, and then hopefully apply that knowledge to other things, as well as flight controllers, and be able to fix their own things, because it's just really not scary, and the amount of components we have on flight controllers is really minimal other than the voltage regular I mean other than the capacitors and resistors we really just have a couple ICs that could go bad once you know what each one does then you know it's just really easy from there all right guys so if you guys do like this content please consider joining my patreon I need all the support I can get to keep this content going and uh, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and if you also have some donations that would be absolutely phenomenal donations as in broken things ESCs flight controllers and anything of that nature would be super awesome and it'll help this series keep going. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.